What's up? Hello. How are you? What's up? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Did you have a fun filled weekend? <laughs> I fun filled because, you know, I was staying away from people. But no, yeah. it was good. It was a relaxing weekend. How was yours? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I've just been working. So I've been kind of very, yeah. I'm so happy to be having this conversation with you today. This is very exciting. The first thing I wanted to ask you that was mulling over a bit, even though people know you from your work with B, obviously, and, and obviously Black is King, which is such a phenomenal piece of work, history, time capsule, future, you know, it represents all those things. We think of film and moments and TV as very iconic, but what they're wearing is almost as important as what the show was about or what the movie was saying. You know, it's like, I wouldn't know what a Christian Louboutin was if it wasn't for Sex in the City, you know? And I think that's why a role of a person who is putting them in clothes is saying just as much as the writer is, is saying just as much as the director is. So it's such an integral part of the process. But I wanted to ask you, what for you is the most exciting thing about being a Black artist right now? And then also, what would you say is the most difficult thing about being a Black artist right now? One of the most exciting things right now, I feel like, is being able to contribute to things that really would outlive me. You know, Mm -hmm. from growing up, being a young girl, looking to other women, I get to be that woman you know, that people get to see. And I get to be that representation. I get to be that kind of example that is possible. Let me just go go straight back. Like, I started Black on Everything as an answer to the movement. I'm fleshing out Black on Everything to be a marketplace, like a platform where a lot of these brands, still curated by me, Mm. can come on to sell their merchandise and to access the market. It's like, if you want to buy Black, like, here's an easy, you know, tour guide. Exactly. You know, so as Vogue is doing write-ups on me, you know, and they highlight Black-owned everything, these brands get to access that same kind of platform. A lot of people, you know, through the movement, were calling out corporations and the participation in the community or lack thereof, you know, how their staff was not diverse, X, Y, and Z. So getting online and kind of being an internet thug against Celine or Chanel, like, it's only really going to last for so long and go for exactly. so long. Exactly. So how do you take... If you put, you know, 75% of your energy into that, you could take 25% and put it into actually promoting a Black-owned brand, like promoting a creator, you know, from our community, and it'll go a lot further. How far away are we from having a Black high-end fashion house? If you think about it, if you look at red carpets and, and Black celebs, it's like, what are you wearing? Chanel, Gucci, Prada, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, cool, yeah. you know? But it's also like, I take pride in the fact that I'm wearing Rich Fresh. You know, I take pride in the fact that I'm wearing Pierre Moss or something like that. You know, I think it's feasible. I think oftentimes, you know, many of us, as we're building our business, a few years in, have a price. And it seems like that's the reward at the end of the rainbow. And oftentimes, that's a way for them to take it away. Mm-hmm. When it's about to be big, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so when you have these huge corporations that kind of want to come in and they buy your brand, right. they bought you out. You know, it seems right. as if they, you know, you kind of contributed to this long lasting legacy, mm-hmm. but they bought you out of continuing that story of ownership. Another issue too is, is the handling of money and finances and things like that. Because I was trying to invest in a, a black brand and I, you know, talk to my my money guy it was a tricky thing they were like these books are not <laughs> we gotta yeah and, and I was like okay and so what I did was I was like well talk to his people and educate them about what their books need to look like and and we're not gonna charge them for that service you know and then we're gonna hopefully get the business set up to the point where we can invest in it because I think that's what I'm looking to do is to put my money where my heart is and like invest in these companies and like how do we help these young companies be sustainable and actually financially sustain themselves. Someone, I was like, oh, we could do like financial literacy courses. And somebody said, um, like, yeah, a lot of high school students could really benefit. And I said, a lot of 30 year olds could benefit. Yeah. From that. All right. you know so tell me more about Hillman Grad, though. Like, so what is the process and how it works? It's funny because Hillman Grad has sort of expanded. Hillman Grad initially is a production company. <laughs> like, that's really that's what it was. Yeah, but as the world changed and as I kind of started to see what was needed for, from people, that's where Hillman Grad Mentorship Program was born. For, for us, what we do at Hillman Grad is we really ask questions, you know, because a lot of people come up and say, I want to be a director. First thing I ask is, have you ever taken a class or have you ever shadowed anyone? And more often than not, they're like, okay, no, I haven't done that. And I say, well, 
what do you want to direct? What stories do you want to tell? And oftentimes they're like, mm, I don't know. And I'll say, you do that work and then I'll do the work of putting you in places where you need to be. And I think that's a big thing that I find oftentimes people don't ask folks questions. They say, I want to be a movie star. I want to be a director. I want to be a writer. And I often say, well, why? A lot of times I think it's like, it seems cool you know, for some people. Other folks, it's like, you can tell when it's their purpose. You can just tell. I always tell people to work for someone that, yes, you admire, but not that you necessarily want to mimic. That's what makes you now a new chapter um, in the book of, you know, of, of Black storytelling, I believe. If I take on 100 mentees, I don't get anything done. So it really became about me hiring people that I trust to teach writing classes. My, my mission is to teach people craft uh, because a lot of people just want to do the thing. And the truth is, like, you can get a lot of people out here doing the thing, but the people that do it well, their stuff will stand the test of time. You yeah. know, it's like there's a reason why people still watch, go back and watch Boys in the Hood. There's a reason why Moonlight still resonates. There's a reason why I think Black as King will be around for, for many months to come. It has to be something so potent and so palpable that it just, it, it sticks around and it keeps coming back. And people keep recommending, like, have you seen this? Have you seen this? Yeah. And so, like, that's really the work I'm trying to make. The lines are blurry in terms of like my art and me, but it's just what it is. You know, I can't help but be vulnerable. I can't help but be transparent in the work. And I think that's why when I look at your work and I can see the transparency, I can see the risk, I can see the vulnerability, uh, I can see the imagination. But I think too, we can also be honest, Black people, like we're always creating and the world is always burning. That's my thing too. I think the revolution hasn't stopped and that was very empowering and really educational. This one is different because we haven't had time like this to kind of be, to sit still and mm -hmm. no one else is moving around us. Right. Everyone came at a standstill at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, it was something kind of unprecedented about that. Like it was very welcome for me initially. I mean, I was making pasta by hand, rolling. Yes. And then, like I was I slow cooking ribs for four I was hours. Cooking a little bit. I was cooking a little bit too. Oh, I was making no pasta by hand, but I was, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Everyone was home to watch. Everyone was at a standstill and had to pay attention. And I think that was the difference this time. So I just wanted to thank you, you know, kind of finish it off. But, you know, just saying thank you for telling our story. Because you, know, you. you could be kind of talking about anything. You could, you could kind of go off and do anything where you prioritize telling your story as a queer woman. I don't know how you identify specifically. Yeah, queer, I say queer, yeah. But, you know, and putting characters like that on TV. I think it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I appreciate that. I appreciate it, sis. And I just thank you for your ability to really exceed any expectations, you know, that could have been put on you, especially for this last piece. I think it, it really, it's a beautiful masterpiece. But what's also exciting about it is that this is just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, I think for a lot of people, you're exciting now, but I think it's clear that you've been clocking in those 10,000 hours because I know it's a lot. I know, you got, I know you're probably cooking up some shit right now, um, you know, as am I, but I'm just excited for you to continue to be making art in the way that you do and putting it out into the world because I think as Black artists, especially now, we have to just do what feels right to us and let the people do what they do. But we can't be concerned about how they're going to receive it because... That's not what it's about. It's really about doing something that feels honest and real. Because sometimes that honest and realness, everybody ain't ready for it. So congrats to, to you on that. And uh, I'm wishing you the best. And uh, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you. This was it. I mean, we can do this for another hour. I know. I was like, I know. I'm like, I feel honored that we get to do this. And, uh, you know, yeah. some love for it. Well, thank you. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you again real soon. All right. Thank All you. Right. Peace.